guys, what's going on? This is uh, Roadrunner. So I'm just going through uh, my military clothing that I have. And I wanted to show you guys all the German clothing I have. The German military stuff. Uh, for those who don't know, I love Soviet and I love German military. Whether it's the uh, clothing, whether it's the weaponry, the rations, the field gear. I love German and Soviet military stuff. That's why I always buy it. Uh, I don't technically agree with the political ideas. I definitely am against Nazism, and there is some stuff of uh, of socialism and communism I like, but I'm not completely for it. Um, but I wanted to show you guys all the clothing I have, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna wear it. And uh, I think if anything, really. If you really want to know how much or what country I love and which one I would love to visit, look right here. I got the Confederate naval flag right there, and then I got the East German NVA Commis DDR nation flag right there. I more am for, uh, I really want to go to Germany basically. I can even speak some German too, but I'm not going to do it right now. So anyways, uh, I'm going to start off first with, I don't know the name of this one. I know this is German because it comes from a very reliable source and the guy who gave it to me he's an old Vietnam vet he's just like me he collects a lot of different military stuff he actually owns the military museum and store over in Jefferson Texas and he's the one who gives me a lot of uh, military gear I own and this one I can't remember if he said this was either the first world war or the second world war but basically the guys who were digging the trenches and stuff uh, for the German armed forces, uh, the army specifically, or at that time, the uh, Wehrmacht, uh, this is what they were wearing. And so this was made heavy enough to wear the mud, uh, I'm sorry, the dirt and the mud that they were digging up wasn't going to basically ruin the rest of their uniform. They basically would put this over their their battle dress uniform or whatever they called it over there. Um, so this one I really like to wear and the way you could tell it's European is because at that time you can't really tell on the video but uh, that's basically all aluminum uh, buttons that they were using at the time instead of the plastic plastics like they use now. So I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do this by generation two. So I'm gonna move this over here. And the next one I'm gonna show off, which I might have already done this before, either last year or this year. This is East German Strictine, which translated to English as rain camo or line camo. Now I'm gonna put this out there real quick, historical wise. Uh before World War II, or during that, and even post-World War II, there was a main German army, which was the uh, Wehrmacht. That was the armed forces of Nazi Germany, and I think even before that, I don't know if that was the same name for the First World War for the German armed forces. I think that was more imperial than what, uh, than what became after the post-World War, especially with the Treaty of Versailles. But, um... After the Second World War ended, and post-World War, the original Wehrmacht was disbanded, but because Germany was divided in West Germany and East Germany and Berlin similarly, came two different uh, German militaries. West Germany and West Berlin had the Bundeswehr, and then uh, East Germany and East Berlin had the Wehrmacht, the new version, so to speak. West Germany... And West Berlin was uh, basically, I guess what you could call, uh, I wouldn't say colonial, but it was basically part of the Western Allies. It was uh, part of NATO. It's basically the German version of America, in my opinion. That's how I look at it. Uh, East Germany's Wehrmacht was basically communist, as you could tell right here. Uh, so basically, as I was saying, Strictarn uh, means line camel or rain camel. Uh, somebody on eBay said it was bark camo. That's completely false. It doesn't blend in with the bark. I mean, the back, the back of it does really, but this was more of a rain kind of camo. Uh, before they used this, they used a camouflage called Blumentarn, which means flower camo. 
uh, that was actually like a blotted, you know, uh, kind of a mixed color of greenish, a little bit of purplish, if I remember correctly, along with a brownish tanned color. Uh, those are really hard to find, and if you do find them on eBay, which you can find them on eBay, but if you do, if y'all remember correctly, I have the, uh, East German Assault Pack, that, uh, that rectangular looking one. Okay, the Blumentarn version costs $98 just to buy it itself, plus $27 for shipping, and that's from the United Kingdom. So you can imagine, even with the original Blumentarn uniform, how much that would be... Uh, to get Blumentar related stuff, and I don't own Blumentar stuff or Sneeze Tarn stuff. I wish I did. Anyways, uh, they East Germany started using the uh, Strict Tarn sometime in the I want to say it was either early or mid 70s, and they stopped using it until 1990 when uh, East and West Germany both you uh, reunited into what is now Germany, and uh. What happened with that was basically the uh, West German political powers, I guess you could say, basically took over what would have, what would have been East Germany, uh, political wise. And so because of that, they basically kicked out the uh, Wehrmacht, uh, what they didn't want need from the Wehrmacht, and they did take soldiers in. They took in soldiers and officers, and. I guess you, as you could tell, they did not need the uh, strict tarn camo because of the fact. And before I go on, uh, strict tarn actually originated in Czechoslovakia and Romania. They started it originally, but the way you could tell the difference between East German strict tarn and Romanian and Czechoslovakian strict tarn is the fact that uh, Czechoslovakian and Romanian is more vibrant. It's a more grayish, vibrant color. Still has the same. Uh, camo lines as you can see on here but it's more of a grayish background and it has the capability of uh in other words if they if they use infrared sensors on the uniform the uniform doesn't show up so in other words you can't be seen i'm trying to word that correctly uh east german variant is more of a brownish background with a even darker brown line camo uh, it doesn't have the same capabilities as the Romanian and Czechoslovakian version. I really wish it did. Uh, you get two pockets on the front. And then you get two on each, uh, each arm. One right there and one over here. And actually, what makes this even cool is, uh, where is it? Right here is another pocket. This is where your handgun would have went. And I don't know if that was for all soldiers, but I'm pretty sure that was for the officers. And then you also have an inside pocket on the other side. And so I'm going to move this. And we're going to go to Bundenspeer. Now, Bundenspeer was the West German uh, post-war uh, military. Uh, army specifically. I believe that was only for the army. I could be wrong. Um, first off, we're going to go with this hat. This is a 1968... Uh, this is basically the, the army's uh, hat. You know, everybody's familiar with uh, every army having their own hat. This one right here is uh, the new Bundeswehr one. This one was 1968. Uh, somebody or some people get it mixed up with the sailor's cap. But this one is actually the army one because the logo on the front for the army one is more bigger than the sailors. Than the sailors. Uh, which should also be mentioned, since I brought this up, the East German Wehrmacht Navy also used the same thing, but theirs had the, uh, the communist logo, uh, right here, instead of the West German Bundeswehr logo. So, uh, this one's 1968, I picked this up for $15 at a antique store. Uh, this right here is Flecktarn, this is basically, uh, polka dot camo germany was very good at making camouflage and i want to say they started it back in 1917 when with the camo itself not not this one in particular but world war ii came about and the waffen ss troopers uh had a camouflage similar to this i can't remember what the name of it is but uh they had a camo similar to this it was more of a uh fall autumn leaf looking color 
and so a lot of us like to basically make the uh the statement that it was the grandfather of uh all the tarn and basically all the german camos that you see you know snee tarn fleck tarn etc um even blumen tarn to an extent and so basically this is polka dot camo this is basic this is closer to uh it closely resembles the woodland camo that the u.s army or the u.s military was using up until the mid 2000s and uh it's actually one of my favorites i wear this one the most out of the uh all three of the ones i have uh the one i have the bone and spear cap i just got that one uh last week actually from a friend's dad here in lufkin who's actually part of the bone and spear or was from 98 to 2001 so uh it's really cool i never knew that i actually just met them recently a couple weeks ago and uh i was wearing my flectarn uniform uh <coughs> because uh i don't like wearing American uniforms. I mean, I do have them, but I don't like wearing them out in public because I get tired of people assuming I'm in the military. And, uh, so I was wearing this fleck tarn, and I noticed over his son, his 16-year-old son that he adopted, had a similar fleck tarn jacket. Uh, matter of fact, it was basically the same fucking one. Excuse my language. I'm sorry. I usually don't like doing that. Uh, and he, his father, who was in the wooden spear, had the fleck tarn pants. And so we started talking, you know, I told him, you know, I'm big into German military stuff and blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I just met up with them a couple of days ago and his dad gave me his uh, Bundenspear cap. So, and I've had one before, but I lost my last one recently about maybe almost two months ago when I was over in Longview. But anyways, that's basically all my military stuff. I'm going to stop here for a second. I'm going to put all the uniforms on. And kind of show you guys what it looks like. So uh, let's see what we got here. So uh, here's my Boon and Spear uniform. Like I said, it closely resembles the uh, Woodland camo. And again, it's one of my favorites. I love this one. I'm actually trying to get all the military related German Boon and Spear uh, gear I can get off of eBay within the next couple months. Um, Really, all I'm missing is the pants, and the boots go along with it, too, because they use similar boots like we do here. So I'm going to put... Next, I'm going to try the other two on. Here's my uh, Strict Tarn. It's actually very comfortable. This has, this has a... It's more of... How to put it? It's just more comfortable, you know, between this and the Fleck Tarn, I wish the Fleck Tarn was made in this material because the material, it feels a lot softer. Even after washing it so many times along with the Fleck Tarn, the Fleck Tarn is good, but it doesn't have a lot of uh, soft spots, so to speak. So with that being said, it's just one of those things where you kind of got to go with both, you know, it just, to me, I guess it just depends on how the weather is outside. Last but not least, the one that I do not have a name for. Uh, this is comfortable. It's not as comfortable. You know, I don't have a lot of, uh, just nothing really to say about it. I don't even have a year or date on it like I have with the other two. So, I mean, it's good to wear. It's comfortable. It's old. Uh, I should say the buttons, because they're aluminum, are a lot harder to use than the other two uniforms because they don't go in smoothly like the other ones do. So uh, with that being said, uh, not only that, they only got two side pockets. You know, I like it. I like it having where I got the two side pockets down here and then the two chest pockets, I guess you can call the breast pockets. So uh, other than that... Nothing really special. I uh, hope you guys liked this video. Please hit like, subscribe, share the video, comment, do whatever. Uh, hopefully, once I start getting more German military stuff in, or any other military stuff really, which I'll probably do more videos on those, uh, I'm gonna try to do like I said, I'm gonna try to do more videos, and I'm really trying to get Blumentarn. Here in the future because Blumentarn is the most rarest and expensive German post-World War II East German military uniform to get uh, 
the Boone and Spears uniform after World War II or basically the American stuff. West Germany was basically Americanized, whereas East Germany was more of a German state. It still had that communist Soviet Russia feel, but they were allowed to keep their Germanness, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I stick to it, because I feel like I, I guess you could say, I wouldn't say I identify with German culture the most. I think that's being a little, uh, I wouldn't say sadistic. I'm not sure if that's even the right word, but I feel like it's kind of disrespectful in a way. To say that you identify with that culture, especially when you're still learning a lot about it. You know, I don't know everything about Germany. That's obvious. I can give you a lot of stuff and a lot of facts on Germany and Austria and Romania and Hungary and stuff like that when it comes to military related shit. But when it comes to other stuff, I can't. I don't, I don't know, you know. But I love German culture in general because of the fact that, like, the land itself, the country, is just amazing. I've never been there, sadly, but from the pictures and the videos I've seen and the stories I've been told, you know, Germany is just one of those places where I feel like I gotta go, you know? Uh, so, don't mean to hold you guys up any longer. I'm gonna get off here and go to bed. I gotta do a job tomorrow morning, so, uh, peace.